it is so hot. So I'm going to have a bit of a Beyonce moment with this fan because otherwise we're not going to get through this. I really hope that the sound is okay, but this is a sacrifice I'm willing to make because it's so hot. <laughs> Hello everyone. Today we are going to be talking about the books I want to read this summer. I want to read a lot this summer. I'm sort of sick of myself. I've gotten a little sick of myself because um, I haven't been reading much this year. To be fair, loads of other things have been going on and I don't feel, I don't feel guilt, but I just want to read more. I just want to read more. So I thought it would be fun to go through three piles of books, three types of books that I'm really hoping to read this summer. And that would be fun, I thought. Speaking of books you could read this summer, let's hear a quick word from our sponsor. Thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. Book of the Month is a fast growing online book service for readers. Their mission is to promote new and emerging authors and find you the perfect book to read. A beautiful mission. Every month, their team goes through hundreds of titles to pick out five of the most interesting books from new and popular authors to present to you. So you can pick one of these cool books and spend more time reading and less time researching. June's books include Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid, The Maidens by Alex McAlides, Instructions for Dancing by Nicola Yoon, Sky Falling by Mia McKenzie, and Half Sick of Shadows by Laura Sebastian. My favorite part of it is that it's risk free. If you are not interested in one of the books that month or something comes up, you can skip a month for no charge. Your first hardcover book is $9.99 if you use my code down in the description. Thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. They are linked down below if you want to check them out. Now let's dive into the books, starting with pile number one. I have these three piles. I don't know where to start. Pile number one, Lucy Maud Montgomery. <laughs> ah, yes, my new obsession. So I've gotten a little addicted to a new author that I'm really excited about, and I've never read one of her books, but for some reason I am utterly obsessed already. Most famously known for Anne of Green Gables, Lucy Maud Montgomery is a Canadian author and writer who um, wrote loads of different things. I've come to learn. So I really want to read Anne of Green Gables. I have read a graphic novel version of it. I have watched the animated series, the old 80s version back in my childhood and more recently was obsessed with Anne with an E the Netflix CBC show that is just utterly brilliant. If you haven't watched it, please go watch it. I just love it so much. Um, so I, okay, I've literally, <laughs> I have literally been saying that I want to read this book since like 2013. Maybe this is the year, maybe not. Because I'm also excited about The Blue Castle, which I talked about in my last book video. This is a lesser known uh, Lucy Maud Montgomery book but it stars a 29 year old character named Valency, who is at the time period conventionally kind of failed at finding a husband and get like having children and having her own home. She still lives at home. She's never been in love, but something happens. She loves reading and she loves writing. So I don't know what's going to happen. I actually have no idea, so don't spoil it for me. But I'm really excited to read this story of, of an older character from Lucy Maud Montgomery. But then we come on to the other arm of this branch. Lucy Maud Montgomery nonfiction. Introducing the 700 <laughs> page biography by Mary Henley Rubio, The Gift of Wings. The Globe and Mail says it's a triumph. It looks and sounds phenomenal. You know, it's got the classic photo pages. Every couple of hundred pages, you get some photographs, but it's supposed to be the most extensive, highly regarded biography on Lucy Maud Montgomery. I have, uh, I did a bunch of research. Basically, I was up really late reading a Wikipedia, her entire Wikipedia page article, and I was like, I need more, which is exactly what happened with me with Frida. If you will remember, I read Frida's Wikipedia page and I was like, I need more. And now I own 
like nine books about Frida Kahlo. But regardless, this looks great. I have a hard time reading big books, as you all know. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. The final one I've already started reading and I'm so enthusiastic about The Alpine Path, The Story of My Career by Miss Lucy Maud Montgomery. Um, how many times can I say Lucy Maud Montgomery? <laughs> In 1917, she was asked to write a column for a newspaper about her career as a writer and um, as an artist. And that's what she did. She did a column for a few weeks or a few months. She wrote these articles that would come out periodically and then they were combined into this incredible book. Oh my God, the binding is so shiny, but look it. I am utterly obsessed with this cover. I bought it secondhand and I just think it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. So I wanna read that. I've already started it. It's great. So that's category number one. Me and Lucy Mott. <laughs> Category numero dos is Otessa Moshfeg. Okay, Otessa Moshfeg. Let's talk. Uh, I started with my year of rest and relaxation. I read this, now I think it was two years ago. Loved it. 10 out of 10. Actually, when I finished it, I gave it a 4 out of 5. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought about it, I couldn't stop thinking about it, I realized. And I ended up bumping that up to a 5 to 5. Absolutely one of my all-time favorites. I think this is such a phenomenal book. I really recommend it. And so of course I wanted more. So she um, also has, oh my God. She also has this uh, book, Eileen, which was, believe it or not, her debut, which was shortlisted for the Booker Prize. Incredible. And um, I picked this one up right away. Haven't read it yet. She also has the short story collection, Homesick for Another World. I have actually read the first story in this collection. It was phenomenal, but also it was kind of eerie because it was like a prototype to, where did I put it? A prototype to my year of rest and relaxation. It was like about this weird teacher who was sleeping in a weird situation. And it just had all these little details, like the bodega that she visits and stuff that were like eerily similar to the other book. So I'm really excited to dive in more to read more of her stories. Um, this is also beautiful. I'm obsessed with this. I think this is my favorite of all her covers. But then of course, she also has the new Death in Her Hands. And this is one of the great shames of my life. This advanced reader's copy was sent to me pretty soon after I'd finished reading this. And I was like on this Otessa Moshfag high. I was like, this is the moment. It's all happening for me. I have found a new favorite author. I'm gonna just blow through and read all of her books and I haven't read it. This was slated to release in April of 2020 and then obviously COVID happened and I think it got delayed until August of 2020, but it did come out last year. I've heard mixed reviews of it, but that's fine. I'm gonna make up my own mind. So I would really love this to be the summer of Otessa Moshfeg. I would be very content with my life if I did that. The final pile I have for you is random. The first one, it's The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. I got this at a thrift shop for a dollar. For a loony, ladies and gentlemen. I paid a loony. <laughs> I'm obsessed with this cover. I think it's phenomenal. Just phenomenal. Absolutely gorgeous. Fantastic. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 production. And I can't, and it doesn't feel like anyone's ever read it because it just feels like really new. Um, although, albeit yellowed, but the spine isn't broken. Um, but it just feels like the universe is asking me to read this book because everyone I talk to is reading a John Steinbeck right now. There's just been these random occurrences in my personal life, like my boyfriend's best friend was just reading Steinbeck and going crazy about how much he loved it. And um, on my podcast, we had the wonderful Max on of Well Done Books. I'll link him down below and I'll link the podcast down below. But he had just finished reading a Steinbeck and I was like, what's going on? What's happening? But it is big. It does scare me. It feels like it would be good to read this during the summertime. Dorothy Parker says, it's the greatest American novel I have ever read. Well, damn. All right, next up in my random pile, we have Felicity by Mary Oliver. This is sort of just um, symbolic of poetry in general and Mary Oliver more specifically. I'd love to read some more Mary Oliver this year. I read another one of her collections. What was it called? A 
Thousand Mornings. Is that what it was called? Did I make that up? I was right. It's called A Thousand Mornings. Uh, I read that one and I liked some of the poems and it wasn't my favorite collection of hers. Um, I have started this one. I'm partway through. Can you see that I've started to dog ear a couple of the good ones? I love Mary Oliver. I love her poetry. I love her worldview. I have pretty much stopped using social media slowly over the last few years, <laughs> but I've like abandoned Twitter. I've abandoned Instagram. I am spending more time outside and I'm like my, I feel like my brain <laughs> is refocusing on nature and things that aren't the internet. And that's what Mary Oliver very much symbolizes for me. So any summer with Mary Oliver is a good summer. Am I right? And the final two that I wanted to talk about are a teaser, I suppose, of a project I want to do this summer that I definitely want to do a whole video about. But I want to try tackling a few romance reads this summer. I don't read romance and that's for no reason other than I just haven't picked them up. I own a couple on my shelves and I have read some romances like many, many years ago, mainly like Rainbow Rowell. So I want to tackle some of the ones that I already have on my shelves, but I also picked up these two that I think I'm gonna really enjoy. Who knows? So the first of these two is Strange Weather in Tokyo by Hiromi Kawakami. Um, I also own the Nakano Thrift Shop by this author. I'm really entranced by these covers um, that she has on all of her books. I think they're so good. But this one sounds a little strange, I'll be honest. It's about a 38 year old woman who uh, one day, I don't know if it's like at a bar or something, but she runs into one of her old high school teachers who's 30 years older than her and a relationship forms. And that's really all the back has given me. This gets highly recommended often, so I wanna check it out. That sounds like a fun, weird romance. And then we've got Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. I don't know where I heard about this one. I guess it doesn't really matter. This is about a character named Grace who has completed her PhD in astronomy um, and to celebrate goes on like this wild Vegas nights and ends up getting married to a stranger. And when she goes back to her normal life, kind of thinks she realizes how unhappy she is, just miserable, hates what's going on. And she decides, you know what, this summer, I'm, forget this, <laughs> I'm going to New York City to get to know my wife. <laughs> I think that sounds great. So um, yeah, I don't know. I've heard, where did I hear about this book? I heard a really positive review of it, but regardless, I think it sounds really fun. And I think it sounds like a perfect romance read for me. Okay, let me try and hold all the books. For some reason that feels like an important step in the process here. Oh, we have, we definitely have a color theme going. We have this pinky green pile. Oh God. Yep. Here we go. All right, everyone. This is my pile of books I'd very much like to get to this summer. Will I? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're curious to know what I'm reading every week, the best way to do that is to check out my podcast, Books Unbound. Every week I go on there and chat about what I'm reading with my best friend. <laughs> That's beautiful, isn't it? Thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. If you are interested in checking out Book of the Month, the link's down below. I'd love to know if you've read any of these books. I don't want to pick them up again. You know what I talked about. Let me know if you've read any of those books, but also let me know what you're excited to read this summer. Is there an author you really want to dive deep into? For me, it's Otessa and, and Lucy Maud. <laughs> I know apparently like in her lifetime, she liked to be called Maud. But am I, I don't think I'm on a first name basis or like on a nickname basis with Lucy Maud Montgomery until I've read that 700 page biography. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys in my next one.